Welcome back. Today we're going to do another breakdown. We're going to do a Watts 009. This is the first generation. There's the M2 and an M3 after it, which has the plastic parts, and I'll go over that later. Let's go ahead and start breaking this down. I'm not a big fan of these, just for the fact that they can be finicky. Um, I've had a lot of bad luck taking them apart, but you can. Um, if it's a newer one, they're a little bit easier. So first we start out, it's just the one plate here with the four bolts with a half inch head on it. Once you get the four bolts, this is spring loaded, so make sure you're holding it because otherwise it'll go flying up as you can see here. It just springs up. Once you get the relief out and you slid it out of the out of the cat out of the top here, we can go ahead and take it take it apart. I already loosened this up. And this is where the difference in the different models is. This is the first one, so it's all made of brass. The new ones are plastic, but they're all pretty much the same design. You're gonna have a threaded piece here on the end, and that holds a washer and the bottom relief plate there, or the check, the rubber, that seals in the bottom of the vessel. You have a little O-ring that goes inside, and that's also still in the plastic ones. There's an O-ring at the top and if you get a little bit of water coming out or out the bottom, if you have a drip, if you get a drip out the bottom, you go ahead and it could be that. So there's a nut on the top. The new ones are very similar, like I said. So we'll take that off. You have this one, this gasket here this diaphragm is not going to be in the newer ones. It's pretty much just going to be this bigger diaphragm that you have on the M2s and the M3s. So these ones have a few more O-rings or washers and a few more diaphragms. That's just to keep the metal from leaking. But pretty much once you get that, it's all broken down. So now let's go in to get to the checks. So inside, you'll have the spring. Make sure you take that out too for the relief. You're going to have a retainer and this plastic retainer is what keeps the checks from going in and out. It keeps them in place. So you're going to want to pull that out. Now highly recommend if you do not have a spare one of these and you're just taking it apart to take a look, do not pull this out. They get It's plastic, it gets brittle and it's tight sometimes and you'll end up breaking it then you're out of a backflow. So if you need the water on, you won't be able to stop the water from dumping then. So make sure before you take it apart, you have another one of these. I keep spares on my truck at all times, just in case. So now you're left with the checks. You got your number one check and your number two. I always pull the number one first. It doesn't matter. But just go ahead and get a screwdriver in there and push on the edge and it'll come right out. I misspoke in the video. The check has an O-ring on the outside that seals to the inside of the vessel. And that's what keeps the checks from leaking. And then you'll have your spring. Again, just like rather backfill, your number one is larger than your number two. So we're going to take the check apart. All you're going to do is I like to push it on my palm here, giving a hold. 
giving it a nice hard turn. Sometimes it's tough. So push, push together real tight and turn with your palm. It is spring loaded, so it's gonna come apart. This is your check. Now this rubber, they typically come in a set, the whole thing. Um, you can try to go ahead and flip it, um, but you're gonna run a risk of ripping it and just still having a problem. I also, just like with the retainer, these cages get brittle. So before you go ahead and pull this apart, always have a kit. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've cracked one of these <laughs> and then I was stuck. Spring and your checks, all right there. Same thing with the number two. Take your screwdriver and slowly work that out. It's going to break down the exact same way. Push, turn, and your check's apart. Then you'll be able to check to see what's following it. Sometimes it's the O-ring on the outside, and as like a lot of backflows, your number one check typically gets damaged from something. You may have sediment on there. This one does, and I can show. I'll do a close up of that. So now that's it. You have your checks out. In the bottom of these, where this relief sits, there's an actually another part. And I usually try not to remove it because I tend to have, it gets worse. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll rebuild it, put it back together, make sure everything's good. If not, then I'll go ahead and I'll remove it. So you have the relief on the bottom. There's This is just pushed in. So I tend to just get it loose with some needle nose. Take a screwdriver, give it a few taps, and it comes right out. The difference is on the new ones, they don't have this, they don't have the bar across here. So the relief, for this first generation with the brass, the, the relief on these first gen actually slide inside of that part there to help keep it straight. And this is where I was talking about get corroded and doesn't move. So sometimes you'll have to force this relief out, clean up this pin, and make sure that it slides freely in this relief guide. Now that we have it completely broken down, it is pretty simple. Like I said, I don't have the best of luck with these. I typically replace them. Um, the tolerances are very low on these. So if it does get frozen, uh, that O-ring on your checks don't sit inside these seats very well. And then you're gonna end up having a drip and a problem anyway. They may not pass. So instead of taking all that time to repair it, um, my recommendation, take it as you will, is to go ahead and just go ahead and replace it. Even if you put a brand new one in, you're gonna get more life out of it for a little bit more cost.